Well, I've got a thing for you today. It's a, uh, we're going to check out fuel unporting. It's a fuel management issue where you run out of gas even though you have tank fuel in that tank. Okay, so stick with us as we check it out on Flywire. Hey, I'm Scott Purdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to check out fuel unporting. I didn't invent it. It's a thing, and uh, some people don't think it's a thing in Bonanzas, but uh, I kind of think it is. And uh, what it is, is you're in a turn, and the fuel sloshes away from the pickup point, and um, then the engine runs out of gas. You get a slug air, and when you roll back out, that uh, the mechanical fuel pump on the engine is not enough to actually pull the fuel and overcome that uh, that uh, air pocket in the line. So um, you run out of gas, and you can't get the engine started again without turning on the uh, auxiliary fuel pump. So that's what we're going to check out today. And um, the POH uh, actually talks about this for takeoff, and the takeoff limitation is 13 gallons in a tank for takeoff, and that's all it really says. And uh, so um, that's say anything about landing. So most people don't think about it for landing, but I think it's uh, something that uh, that happens in landing. So, um, and the POH, by the way, it talks about uh, loss of engine power, and it says uh, fuel flow gauge check, see if you got fuel flow. And if fuel is abnormally, fuel flow is abnormally low, mixture full rich auxiliary fuel pump on, and uh, then fuel quantity indicator check, check for fuel supply in the tank being used. And if the tank is empty, go to the other tank. Uh, pretty simple, uh, not really conducive to the heart in your uh, throat moment when uh, the engine quits in your airborne. So, um, anyway, I think that, I think it could be a little better, but that's the way it is. So we're going to check this out. Here's the conditions. Uh, we're flying in autopilot, and I'm going to make a turn. And uh, there's two theories. One is is that uh, if you have baffle and baffle tanks, then that, that'll hold the fuel next to uh, the uh, pickup point, and you're not going to run out. Sort of true, and, except for I think in a long duration turn, the uh, fuel's still going to run outside uh, along the tank. And the other is is that if you do a coordinated turn, then you're not going to lose uh, fuel at the pickup point. And um, is that true or not? Well, it, it, maybe we'll see. Uh, I don't know if I have baffle tanks in this airplane. Oh, two miles. Uh, but uh, there he is. But uh, we're going to check it out. I got fuel low enough that I can actually bore scout that tank and see if there's a uh, see if there's uh, baffles in it. So uh, the other one is is that if you do a coordinated turn, the fuel won't slosh, won't run. Um, Here's the thing is, uh, I've had two engine failure, or fuel issues that I attributed to fuel importing. Uh, one of them was uh, in a T-34, and the other one was in a P-35, and both of them were at uh, low, uh, basically sustained turns, so that's what we're going to do. And I've got the left, the right tank at five gallons, and we're on the right tank now. And we're uh, in uh, heading mode, so we're going to run this for a few minutes. <laughs> well, so much for my theory. Uh, we'll see if uh, I have baffling, which might explain the situation. Uh, definitely, I didn't unport the fuel. I got a little bit of fuel flow fluctuation, but other than that, it didn't really happen. So, uh, not as I expected. So, busted my own med. Oh well. I need to interrupt this video for breaking news. Well, of sort. <laughs> so there I was. You saw it. I was ready to give up my theory. I, I proved myself wrong. You, you know, you heard me. But it turns out, um, you know, I didn't actually design the test very well, so I'll admit it. When I landed after the flight, uh, I saw that there were some pretty good comments on the 2019 Bonanza Accident Recap and Trend video, and uh, one of them was from CIES Incorporated, uh, an excellent post from Scott Philbin that said basically that he had data that showed that some very interesting results that actually supported my theory in a way. So um, it just so happens that I have those CIS uh, fuel centers and uh, three at Whiskey Bravo, so I called him up, and we had a great conversation. And he said that, and uh, that the five gallons that I had in the fuel tank was not enough 
to unport the fuel pickup during a turn in smooth air. Turbulence would be a different factor, but it was smooth. Uh, he said that the, in their experience, the fuel was at, if the fuel is at three gallons or less, you stand a really good chance of importing the fuel uh, at the pickup point. So I sent him the data for the file for that flight, and uh, so he could access the readings and the CIS senders and analyze it. Uh, just a quick note about these uh, CIS senders. Uh, the, just about all the fuel gauges in GA airplanes are crap. You know it. They don't work with a hood. A lot of them don't even read accurately when they're in. No fuel in tank. And that's the requirement, by the way, but that is what it is. So my first experience with CIS uh, cinders was putting them in a sky wagon, and I was really happy with them. They're very accurate, extremely accurate. So I wanted them in the A36. And the cool thing is that there are two cinders in each tank, at least in the Bonanza, one on each end. And by comparing the readings, Scott could tell a lot about how the fuel is sloshing in the tank and compare that for the other tank. And he can actually uh, learn a lot about what's going on with the airplane. So I'm going to show you the graphic results uh, from the data. And in the coordinated turns, the fuel only sloshed a little. Um, it was just a great pile of eight. <laughs> but there it was. If there had been turbulence, the sloshing would have been uh, much larger. But during the descent and maneuvering to land, the sloshing was significant. It was actually a surprise for me. The fuel quantity at the inboard gauge reached zero a total of six times, once for over 10 seconds. Realized that the data points are about six seconds apart, so the fuel pickup was uncovered for a significant amount of time. If I'd been feeding on that tank, the airplane most assuredly would have experienced a fuel starvation uh, incident, and uh, the engine probably would have quit, and I would have had a a successful landing would have been seriously in doubt. Uh, pretty critical phase of flight. So I want you to think about the actual situation here. There was five gallons in that tank and with normal maneuvering for landing, that tank showed less than two gallons for four minutes and 20 seconds and it spent one minute and 45 seconds approximately at zero. So even with five gallons in the tank, I stood a very real chance of fuel starvation in a critical phase of flight with little time to correct the situation. That, to me, that was, to, it was really fascinating. So what this is telling me is that fuel starvation due to importing the fuel pickup is a far greater problem than our accident data has been able to show. It is a thing. The FAA and NTSB really only counts it as an accident, as a fuel incident, if they can demonstrate that there was no fuel in the tank. Subsequently, if there's a a little actual data to highlight this is a problem. They don't even collect it. So we don't know it. So how do we deal with this issue? Well, <clears throat> for me, it means that I'm not going to attempt to use a fuel tank with less than seven gallons in it for the landing phase of flight. Just that's the way it is. I've got an uh, upcoming video on Bonanza fuel management, and I need to think about the impact of this discovery a little more before I opine. But heck, in the meantime, uh, I think we all learned something here, and there's more to, more to explore. So in the meantime, you all be safe out there. Fly conservatively. Don't run out of gas. Uh, I hope you liked the video, and if so, please subscribe. It, may, it helps me make more of them. It really does. And uh, hit the bell right down there uh, if you like notifications. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Flywire.